Good. Yes. So how to express your needs to other people without uh, aggressing them, without being needy, without manipulating them. Yeah. Often people think, well, I either please everyone and be the doormat of everyone and accumulate all sorts of tensions inside, or I tyrannize the people or I manipulate them. And there is indeed a conscious and wonderful way in which we can express our needs, even if they are contradictory to other people's needs, without manipulating, aggressing them, and so forth. Normally we can see three main strategies. When we have a need which depends on, other, on others, I mean when we have the need to breathe, it's, it's not much of a thing, we just breathe. But when we have the need for someone to listen to us, or when we have the need for somebody else to arrive in times to the meetings, or for somebody to be more kind, or to show more appreciation, or something, for that, we need the other person. And what uh, often people do, they choose one of three strategies. One strategy is to aggress. You scare other people so that they do what you want. For example, you are the manager of someone and you scare him. If you don't do this, I fire you. You are the teacher of the students. If you don't do this, I kick you out of the school. You don't, pass, you don't get a passing grade. If you don't do this, I kick you out of the inheritance. Something. I will hit you. I will speak bad about you. It will have consequences. Something. You threaten. Or you actually hurt. And then the other person is afraid and is subordinated to you. It has a huge price because as we are violent to other people, we create a tremendous amount of suffering inside of us, inside of them, and we go out of the universal harmony. It's a very bad option. The second option is to manipulate other people, and it can be done in all sorts of ways, we can uh, negotiate, we can uh, give some benefits, we can trick them, we can uh, confuse them, we can do all sorts of things to get what we want. And it is like we are separated when we manipulate, we are separated and we try to outsmart other people to get our needs. For example, these pickup artists, workshops, classic manipulations. The people that work in advertising for politicians, classic manipulations, wiser than the masses, wiser than the sheep, very often using methods of manipulation, pretending that you give when actually you don't, pretending or creating the illusion that the situation is as it is and actually it's not. The third strategy is that of victimizing ourselves, which is very often related to manipulating, in which we use guilt as a leverage. Oh, poor me, you owe me. I will be so horrible, you care about me. I will probably get sick if you don't give me what I want. I am suffering so much because of you. And this is also a very dangerous method because we get to fulfill our needs by suffering and by being weak. So our weakness and our suffering receive a reinforcement. The more we suffer, the more we get what we want. The more helpless we are, the more we get what we want. And therefore our suffering, our helplessness, everything that makes us a victim, everything that makes our condition bad, will be encouraged. We tell our subconscious, give me more weakness, give me more helplessness, give me more suffering, because then I get, oh, nobody pays attention to me otherwise. But when I am sick, oh, maybe I go to a mental hospital, everybody will come to visit me. Yeah, it is this sucking energy from other people and it conditions us to be worse and worse. So these are the three bad ways. Aggression, manipulation and victimizing. And then the fourth way is that of collaboration. This is the healthy one from a place of trust, saying, hey, we're friends, I'm willing to do for you. Now I ask you, honestly, come on time to our meetings, 
or look, I know you have a lot to say, but I'm in a, a difficult emotional place and I need you to listen. I need about half an hour of your time. I just need someone to listen because I have some pain inside and I need to share it. Or I need an advice about that and I need to speak and I need you to be there for me. I know you feel a little impatient, but I need it now. The collaboration mode comes from an assumption that the other person cares, that I care about the other person, and that I will be willing also from my side to help if asked for something similar. And if you go on this path of collaboration, every time you ask something, you bring the other one closer to you. You can actually increase the love between you because of this sincere and transparent form of request. Yeah, it is used very often in a beautiful way in the non-violent communication. It is extremely important to cultivate that. Some people pretend that they are saints and they have no needs and then they will, if not expressed in this way of collaboration, they will express the needs in an impure way by victimizing, by manipulating, by scaring the other person, but somehow unconsciously, not in front. So it's very important to consciously, in the relationships with friends, with co-workers, with lovers, to cultivate this, what do I actually need, and then express it in a form of collaboration. I have this need. What do you think? Can you help me to fulfill it? I need some validation from someone. I need a good, clear feedback. Tell me your real opinion. I need something. I need this, I need that. You express that very clearly and you're willing to take the other person saying no or saying yes, but. And from that place, you are clean and your expression of needs is constructive for the relationship and it's clean inside of you. It doesn't awaken vices, but rather awaken virtues such as honesty, trust, and love. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content on spirituality, tantra, and more. And if you want to sign up for our online classes or for our retreats, you can see our website on the description below.